Corinthian Gnosticism taught that Jesus was the physical offspring of Mary and Joseph, and that Jesus was only human. Corinthus went on to say that the divine spirit of Messiah descended on the human Jesus at his baptism to equip him for his ministry. However, the divine spirit of Messiah left the human Jesus just before his crucifixion, and the The one who died on the cross was merely the human Jesus, just a man who had been specially gifted by the divine Messiah spirit who had then left him. Those are the ideas that John is confronting in this letter. So John here explicitly teaches that the eternal Son of God took upon himself full and complete humanity. We've already seen it in this letter. In the incarnation, he became the God-man, one person with two distinct natures. And here's the point he's making here. That was true from the moment of his conception throughout his earthly life, now and forever. In fact, in verses 6 through 8, John states that Jesus was the divine Messiah, the Christ, at his baptism, which the heretics agreed with. But then John says Jesus was also the divine Messiah at his death, which the heretics denied. John says this is the one, Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah, the Son of God, and he's the one who came both by water and the blood. In other words, he was the God-man at his conception, he was the God-man at his baptism, and he was the God-man when he bowed his eyes in death on the cross, saying, it is finished, and into your hands I commit my spirit. He was the God-man when he was buried. He was the God-man when he was raised from the dead. He is now and forever the God-man. That's the only Jesus that saves, John says. Amen. That Jesus must be the object of your faith. You say, Tom, what possible application can this have in the 21st century. There aren't, you know, Corinthian Gnostics running around Dallas-Fort Worth. That's true. However, think of the, the fruit of their theology. Think of what it led them to conclude about Jesus. Essentially, what the Corinthian Gnostics said is, you know, Jesus was a great man. He was a wonderful teacher. He was a powerful example of a righteous life, but he was not the eternal Son of God, the second person of the Trinity made flesh. And that is sadly extremely applicable for our day because our world is filled with people. In fact, I would say most people in our country believe that about Jesus. They believe that he was just a wonderful man, a good teacher, an example to follow. But they don't believe he was the eternal Son of God, the second person of the Trinity made flesh. Sadly, Many who claim to be Christians believe what the Corinthian Gnostics believe in their conclusions about Jesus. Many in theologically liberal churches, I'm talking about mainline Protestant denominations, old Protestant denominations peppered churches around our city. If you could find out what those people believe, you would learn that all of the seminaries and that most of the pastors and many of the people in those churches deny the deity of Jesus and claim that he was only a man. Many in the charismatic movement, particularly in the word of faith part of the charismatic movement, teach that either during his entire earthly life or at least on the cross, Jesus stopped being God, and the Jesus on the cross or the Jesus in his earthly life was just a man. Listen, if you believe anything less about Jesus than John proclaims in this passage, you have believed a different Jesus. You've not believed in the biblical Jesus, and it is not the Jesus who can save you from your sins. He's a figment of your imagination. My encouragement to you is if you have, if, if you have some other Jesus that you put your trust in than the one we just saw John describe in this passage, I urge you to repent of that idolatry, and put your faith in the true biblical Jesus, the one of the Scriptures. He's the only way to God. He said, I am the way. Not not your Jesus, not a pretend Jesus, not the Jesus that isn't God through his entire earthly life and into eternity, who isn't the God-man. 
He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. There's no other name given under heaven by which we must be saved. Acts 